yeah. I've read about the Vietnam conflict, the war in Vietnam. Ah, I've read about the propaganda that was uh, conducive to success for the North Vietnamese. I saw how, when it first started, and you remember about 64, 65, we just sent special forces over there to help train their people. We were not boots on the ground so much as consultants. And there is one story where, you know, they brought in this big bull for for the cow and uh, the bull got up and it crushed her. Hey, they found that they had to have some kind of harness for the bull, the American bull, to be able to uh, do it without crushing the one because they wanted bigger cattle over there. The U.S. was giving them and when one of the Vietnamese men was asked Oh, well, what they thought of it, and he said, "Yeah, just like America, it, it's all, it's all so big. Uh, oh, it'll just crush you. It's not doing anything for you at all." So there was something about that. So, but at that time, the American public, you know, still World War II vet people, um, Korean War vet people, and people. All of them probably knew it was going to go bad anyway. They were right there going, I'm not sure about this. The French have been over there for a while. And uh, they left. It's, Vietnam is like Afghanistan. Look at that. A jungle country and, uh, and just desolation. It's two different brands of isolation, desolation. You can get lost in both of them. And if you don't know how to read the stars, you'll find yourself in a pet, tiger pet, tiger trap. So it was the propaganda. In the beginning, there was fine support for Vietnam. But uh, with the propaganda that that guy Ho Chi Minh or... Uh, General Vo, whoever it was that did it, they understood propaganda. And they propagandized the shit out of the U.S. and got all the people on college campuses protesting everything. And it, it, it made a confusion amongst the people because I, I don't know, you know, I may not be a smart man, but uh, that kid's in college, uh, they might know something more than I do. Or I thought I told you it's one or the other. There's a lot of confusion. Point is, the military did very well for me. It, uh, I got uh, the Montgomery GI Bill and the New Army College Fund for four years. I got $25,200 for college, which was uh, enough for a four year degree back then. I went through it all. The thing is, I had joined the Army because I didn't know what I was going to do after high school. I said, this will give me four years to think about this. And then when the four years was up, I sobered up. And I said, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? And I said, well, I've got college money. I might as well go see what those fuckers are doing for a while. That's why I went to college. I wanted to see these people that act like it's so difficult. Oh, no. All it takes is discipline, you can get through it. I mean, you don't have a job. You got all of your time to study and read. All you got to do is read what they tell you, and it's easy. 
not so much for writing papers. If I don't like somebody, I don't want to write a paper for them. I've, I've avoided writing a lot of papers for professors because I don't agree with them and I don't think they have a right to my thoughts. It's like a neighbor. The more you get to know them, the more readily they are to use something against you. And they're collecting information all the time. So I also know how the college kids think. I didn't go in there like hey, this is a goddamn military veteran. Uh, Captain Weir told me don't tell anybody because they'll teach you, treat you different. So I nobody even knew. I even had my radical thought in America class for my final paper. I wrote it because I liked the guy Phil Fix, uh, 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 Fri Fisk, Fisk, Phil Fisk. He lived in the Appalachians for a while. When we met for our last thing after you write your paper, you meet with him. And it, he looked at me and the first thing he said, he said, I, I never would have guessed you were in the military. For a whole semester, I sat in that room fucking railing on people for the way that they think. And uh, he never guessed that I was in the military. That to me was a success. Why do you need to tell people you were in the military? I, I wear this so you, you fucking give me some credence if you have it in you. But uh, the thing is, it's interesting. The propaganda thing, how they turned Viet the U.S. against the Vietnamese war from across the border because a guy knew how to use our news and our fucking people. And I'm wanting to say, isn't that what we're doing now? But it's not. It's coming from right within the country. I see kids are protesting on college campuses. Those aren't the people you need to worry about anymore because the propaganda that's coming from the country is coming from that poor guy and the fucking megalomaniacs. The propaganda is coming from right within this country now and people are just fucking believing and doubting and the more they doubt, the closer they come to believe because uh, they don't feel good if they don't know what's right or wrong. They need to be told what's right or wrong. And they are being fucking propagandized. <laughs>